<laughs> we found it. Oh my god, this is like the other than the Savage War, which I don't really need. I feel like this is the perfect Elise. Okay, that is actually a sick animation. I... Hey, buddy, watch this. Hey, folks, Regis here, and it's time for another deck experiment in which we take a crazy idea for a deck and build it live on stream and then see how it works. And you'll see here from this list, this time around, we took a crack at a Zephyrus Highlander token druid. We've seen some quest druid. We've seen some token druid. We've seen some Elise and Highlander stuff popping into druid occasionally, but not really a list that was dedicated to actually running one of. It's usually just like Elise and Zephyrus tossed in there for like late game answers, but this one's actually built around the fact that this is a reliable Highlander deck, but still does some cool token and quest stuff. So basically it just kind of takes everything Drew is all about and fuses it into one super awesome and perhaps even pretty good deck on top of that. All that said, we're gonna go ahead and jump into the deck creation process where we kind of figured out this list on the fly. If you don't wanna see that, you wanna jump right into the gameplay, of course, you can hit the link in the description below to skip to that point and see this deck in action. Uh, so we're gonna build a Zephyrus deck in Druid. We've seen some people do that before. Uh, I actually do want standard here. I never know how to switch this. Uh, I want standard. So basically, just Zephyrus good Druid. I don't know. <laughs> basically the idea is like a lot of people have built Elise decks, right? and tried to go for like combos or shenanigans, which is fine. But I kind of just want to try to build a good Zephyrus deck, like maybe more tokeny, maybe just more mid-rangey. We can look and see what kind of cards are out there and sort of see what direction the deck goes. But I feel like Druid with token stuff can work really, really well with Zephyrus because you have the Bloodlust, the Savage Roars, all of those additional pieces that can help support um, a wide board Druid deck. And it doesn't have to necessarily be combos. But we've seen Zephyrus utilized in other classes, just like Warrior and Rogue and stuff, uh, where it doesn't necessarily make sense. It makes sense in Druid, so let's try to do the same sort of thing in Druid, right? Just to see if it, uh, if it lines up. We could potentially still make it a quest deck, too. There's nothing saying we can't make it a quest deck. Um, we, can, we can take a look at that. But I kind of just want to go through and grab Zephyrus and then just good cards, right? And see what happens. See where we land. And then we start kind of tweaking it to figure out what best supports it, perhaps, from that direction. Like, does it feel more like a token deck? Does it feel more like, um, does it feel more like a mid-range deck? Does it feel like this? I'm just gonna literally grab every good card, any card that kind of gets played in Druid. I'm gonna grab it and see where we land, see what looks like it lines up the best. And then we'll go from there. So I don't really have a plan so much right now. I think token is probably the direction I'm going to lean most towards, if I had to guess. But, um... So you'll know, like, I'm leaving out Keeper of the Grove right now, because I don't think that's a good Druid card so much as a maybe passable Druid card. I'm not even sure Elise is technically a good Druid card right now, but <laughs> we, can, we can think about that, right? So basically, anything that gets played at the moment. And there you go, token druid. There's <laughs> 30 cards, right? <laughs> uh, job done, that kind of lined up perfectly. Su surprisingly well. That worked out surprisingly well. Why are you running quests in an acro deck? I don't know if we are. I I'm not running anything yet. That's what it's, I literally explained in great detail the process we were undergoing. We were undergoing a let's add every good card druid and see what happens so that we're going to refine and kind of prune the deck, some pun intended for druids, prune the deck from here, right? I'm not trying to run anything right now. We're just going to take a look and see what happens. I think this is an interesting way to try to build a, a Zephyrus deck. Just start with your good cards and see where you land, right? These are the cards that Druid are playing right now. I, I literally only added Druid cards to no neutral cards. That may be something that's a mistake. There's some awfully good neutral cards out there. So I do think this looks a lot like a token deck, right? We, we did add a lot of cards that are token-y, but the problem is, right, in a, in a token-y deck, as we've kind of understood it in the past, 
Often curve is relevant, and quest doesn't really support a good curve for a token deck. So you have to play pretty far from behind. Now, that wasn't a problem in the past with things like Whispering Woods and Soul of the Forest, because you'd just play from behind a little bit. Then you'd reload in a big way, and your opponent couldn't resolve your board, and you'd just win regardless. So I do wonder if that is a possibility here, where you still just play for Whispering Woods Zephyrus, the, or Whispering Woods Soul of the Forest. The problem is you lack consistency. Like, you're not always going to hit your Whispering Woods because you only have a one of it in, in your deck, right? You don't have a two of, of it in your deck. So I guess the question is, at that point, like, do you have enough reload and kind of late game influence for it to matter? Like, you could just keep reloading anyway. I think the answer is maybe, right? There are some pretty insane, like, reload cards in this deck. Tinning Torrin, Forest Aid, Scenarius, Oasis Surger, they all build another kind of wide board, Mark of the Loa, particularly post-quest can be pretty amazing. Floop can doubly contribute to some of those. I think cards like low T might be bad here. We might want to go for more kind of wide board reload stuff. Um, so we'll see. Uh, Warrior Priest can deal damage and we'll only lose to Pally. Oh, you're talking about the hero powers still. That's a fun theory crafting idea. Like a, a discussion like... Registry, guys. Hey, Mega Sushi. Hey, man, what's up? I don't know why she didn't say, hey, Rage. Uh, oh, she did kind of say Regis K instead of, hey, guys. I see. She left out the hey a little bit there. But you think we'll ever see some card move to the classic set like Lich King? I would hope so, dude. Would be awesome to have Lich King in the uh, classic set. Shamanistical, I, I see your thing. I'll try to read it later and get back to you. Uh, thanks for the bits, though, Mecca. First bits of the night, man. Awesome. Thanks for kicking that off. It's a load off my back. Not having to worry about bits. So, I, I mean, clearly some things here don't support a token deck, right? Like, that did not support a token deck. Ferocious Howl is not a token card. Wrath is debatably a token card. It is a choose one, both for the quest and Stiladris, which I kind of like. That's kind of neat. Uh, we do not have a lot of early game right now. Well, honestly, that curve is incredibly beautiful for an accidental curve. Oh, my God. That is, like, a perfect curve from a, just like a, a, a stair step kind of thing. Oh my goodness. How did I do that? Garden Gnome I skipped over. I don't think it's a great card. I know Trump wanted it to be awesome. It has been played a little bit, so maybe it's good. It's not a bad card. I just didn't think it stood out as a great card when you were going through. Uh, it is a good reload though, honestly, and we do have some spells that cost five or more, although we have less than normal. Um, we only have three, four, five. That's a little spooky. I mean, this may be a dead card sometimes, but I don't hate it. I don't I don't hate the idea of it. It's definitely another reload. Baby Awesome Michael arrives tomorrow, says Envy Jumper. Congratulations, man. That's awesome. It's really, really cool. So we're back to 30 again. Do we really not run any classic cards in this deck? There are a lot of things that typically, like Snip Snap, for instance. Snip Snap's such an insane card. We have to make room for it, right? Surely there's stuff here that's worse then Snip Snap, like maybe Druid of the Scythe. It is a choose one card though, so I'm hesitant to lose it, right? Landscaping's probably worse than Snip Snap. Lodi is so good with the, with the quest. I don't know if we can cut Loti. Um, do we cut like a Swipe actually? I know Swipe is a great card, but maybe we cut Anubisith Defender because there aren't enough big spells. I honestly am still worried about Garden Gnome, but I'll tell you the difference. Garden Gnome does support the kind of reload tactic here whereas anubis at defender really doesn't this is more of a swing kind of card <sighs> add the five minute treant spell mm, that would be kind of cool but then i'd almost feel like we have to go a treant line i don't really want to go too far down a treant line cut the dreamway guardian i i could definitely hear an argument to shift the curve a little more mid game or mid rangey because if we are going to keep quest then clearly some of these early game cards don't work super well. I can hear that argument. Two Whispering Woods? Do we have two Whispering Woods? We don't have two Whispering Woods. Oh, oh, you're saying you go ahead and add... Oh, I see what you're saying. You're saying add two Whispering Woods. I don't know about that. I think that's a little bit risky. Uh... I think I like, I think, what was I going to cut? Oh, not swipe. Wasn't there something else? I, oh, Anubis at Defender, yeah. 
Like, we gotta have a snip snap. Part of me thinks Zilliax might be worth it still, too, but I don't know what I'd cut. Well, Elise actually is something that we can consider, consider cutting. I do like the idea of Elise giving us extra value, though. Because this deck doesn't want to, you know, it is going to run out of stuff eventually. It's going to run out of value at some point. I do like the idea of Elise just giving us extra reloads, even more ways to just keep coming back. It's true that I don't love Dream My Guardians right now. I think we could get by without bees, too, to be honest. Bees and Dreamway. What would we add? What other good mid-rangey token cards are there, right? There is um, Explodinator's kind of a mid-rangey token card. Good with Snip Snap. Hinge Clan Hag is a good mid-rangey token card. Replicating Menace is a good mid-rangey token card. We could add a Silence with Spellbreaker. All of those sounded fine. We could add Mecharoo as a one drop would be fine. Yeah, I wouldn't mind a Mecharoo. Those are things we're going to be playing on turn two traditionally, so maybe less good than normal. Because we do want to, we do, I, I kind of want to stray away from early cards just because the quest is still there. The quest is still there. I don't know if any of the cards I named are better than, than bees, though. I feel like bees is still... Force of Nature's been brought up. I don't, I don't hate the notion. I just don't think this is a great card. I know it supports two other things, but I think that's a little bit of a trap to fall into. It's like we don't want to run bad cards just to support another mediocre card, you know? Um... Quest wants you to play one drop on two, but I'm arguing that there's just not a lot of power level in that. Like, it doesn't do a lot, so why run a weaker card just to do something weak on turn two? Do you know what I mean? Uh, Pyro gave me a free sub, but he's not here, so I can't thank him. He knows, dude. Pyro gets a lot of love. Don't worry. He's, uh, I'll, uh, if I remember, I'll tell him somebody said thank you i'll try my hardest to at least the real question is uh what card pack will you use i don't i use the random one so what regis is saying is it's better to power spike later on after the quest yeah i think that's kind of what i mean yeah you need one drops because that is what the quest wants well no not really the quest doesn't demand you to to leave only one mana on a given turn the quest just demands you don't spend all your mana so it, it, it's fine to pass a turn I, I'm saying I don't want to waste a card slot on a mediocre turn. If it's going to be a mediocre turn anyway, I don't want to waste that draw and that slot on something that could help me swing the game or pull ahead in the mid game. You know what I mean? Or help me continue to reload. So I don't really want this to be a true aggro deck. I want this to be like a mid rangey deck. I want it to hit its, its power band like turn 6, turn 7, turn 8, you know? Macaroo's good setup for Snip Snap. Sort of. If you're, if you're playing it on two, I can't play Snip Snap on three to follow it up, right? You've got a gap in your curve there. So then you're playing your Macaroo on three and your Snip Snap on four for the quest. That doesn't feel... That doesn't feel great to me. I, you really, really want Macaroo for some reason, Trimudius. I don't know why. I, I can imagine. I thought your suggestion for Force of Nature was a much better suggestion than, than Macaroo. Um... I'm, I'm actually way more tempted by this. I think this makes a little bit of sense. I still think maybe something like Drew the Claw could still be better for the record, but... Or even maybe like a Starfire. Mm -hmm. I don't even hate like an Overflow necessarily. Not Mulch Muncher. Zero mana cards are kind of interesting as well. Because you can play them at any time of the quest. I might go Force of Nature. I don't really see a good... Because I, I, I like to fill in this five hole a little bit. I feel like we have a fall off there on five from a curve standpoint. I don't really see a good five mana neutral card that seems to fit the game plan very well. Not a lot of tokeny stuff here. I mean, Frostful Forelord is kind of a cool follow up. Former Champs kind of neat. But mostly, I think Force of Nature might be it. I, I kind of think that might be the best five mana way to support this deck. Let's do it. Force of Nature it is. Tinny Torn's in here. Yeah, Tinny Torn's there. Cable Rat's not a bad idea. I don't hate Cable Rat. I'd almost rather have a Cable Rat than Dreamway Guardians, now that you say that. 
it's a little bit more flexible from a curve standpoint. I like that idea, sure. Cable rat it is. That's a good that's a good flip there. It's a good change, I think. I like that idea. Tree speaker, I don't think we have enough treants to really add that consistently. I kind of like where we're at here. I sort of want to try this, see if it's worth it. I, I don't know if Zephyrus is going to be worth it in this list because we already have a Savage Roar, <laughs> but I want to try it. So the Zephyrus good druid, let's go. That's enough deck building for now. People watching the YouTube video at home are like, oh my God, get on with it, dude. Play the games, man. It's all people play. People are adding Secret Eater to their deck. That's how you know a deck's a problem. <laughs> I could, I, at least it has an answer. You just have to add Secret Eater to every deck. Even then, you're still having a tough time. Uh, see you, Andrea, dude. Thanks for swinging by, man. Do, 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 do. Nine mana wouldn't do enough. <laughs> you might be right, so it's crazy. You might actually be right. Uh, <laughs> three mana nerf might not be enough. That, that's how you know you're in a bad spot. That's how you know. Okay. Let's try this again. Not in wild format. We're in standard this time. Let's see how it goes. Good druid. Good druid. Does Zephyrus use wild? Uh, no. He only uses classic, non-Hall of Fame, classic and basic cards. So you can't get like Ice Block in Wild, for instance, even though it's originally a classic card, it is a Hall of Fame card, so it's technically in a different set. I think that's the rule. Okay, we got a lot of Murlocs, probably some kind of Murloc combo Paladin. Uh, no, 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 we're not in Wild anymore. No, Regis, it's not combo Paladin. Well, it might, it might be a Murloc Paladin with uh, Tip the Scales, but not... Anything can happen. Just to clarify, the big, the big Murloc summoning spell here is the standard version, not the wild version, which is an important distinction. Okay, this might be good on five. Uh, do we ever go for a cable rat here? I don't think so. I think the landscaping's better. Okay. Not having coin this game is going to hurt us a fair bit, I suspect. I'm hoping Surger's enough to swing. I'm hoping I don't have to play it next turn. That would feel really bad. Yikes. Alright, just gonna trade those in. Sure, sure, we can value trade here. Some more dudes. I think that's fine. We're losing, but we can always flip this back pretty hard. I love these tree ins. They're so cute, man. They're way cuter than the normal ones. The art on these is fantastic. So, next turn we can Torin and just Smork if we want, honestly, or just trade through. It depends on how he resolves this, because we're going to get some nice buffs. Might honestly just be able to counter Smork if he doesn't respect the board, if he just, like, goes face too much. Maybe we just trade through one turn to stay alive. Not traditionally a lot of burst damage, but more like War Leaders can cause problems, right? War Leaders can be pretty bad. We can't go, like, Surger into Power of the Wild. If we could, I'd probably do that. So I think we do just do the, uh, the Torin here. We're going to have to leave up a couple of those uh, Nightmare Amalgams, it looks like. But we can trade over these dudes. Create some real awkward moments for him. If he only has two minions up, even a double War Leader is... Well, double War Leader is lethal, I guess, right? They go up to seven each. That's 14. I think we're willing to take that risk. I think that's a risk I'm going to take. I think he wants to go face here, right? He does not want to shift gears and suddenly trade. So... This should be fine. That's not lethal. Okay. Cool. Is uh, This is lethal, I'm presuming, right? I actually don't know. Um, it sure feels like it, though. <laughs> I mean, it's gotta be, right? Like, it's just gotta be. Yeah, everything is gonna be hitting him very, very hard. Very, very hard. I guess you can always say that's uh, 3 damage times 7 is 21, plus your face is another 2. So that's a 23 damage minimum 
So you would only need one attack for each minion on board to make it 30 damage minimum, so that's pretty much always lethal. As long as you don't have zero attack minions, right? Poor guy. Yeah, I mean, sort of. I... We played pretty slow. He had time to get there. It's just one off, man. He had the time. We gave him plenty of time, right? We just... He didn't respect the swing back, you know? He went face. I don't know what his other card was. I wonder if he just had a tip the scales he couldn't play that turn, so he felt compelled to Leroy. The Leroy actually gave us extra damage. Not that it was necessary for the kill, as you saw, but the one extra minion was pretty chill. Okay, decent looking hand here. We'll probably go ahead and coin on the uh, first activation, just get this going as fast as humanly possible. I saw the word about Murlocs. I see the word about Murlocs has gotten out. Everybody's playing Murlocs decks now. <laughs> Uh, I feel like Zephyr should be able to give Hall of Fame cards under extremely rare circumstances. I mean, I, I would be cool with it giving every card, I guess. it's It would be way more intimidating of a card to guess and, like, obviously to code from Blizzard's standpoint. Like, I can totally understand why they limited the pool, not a criticism, but I'd be fine with it giving everything as an option. Like, just let us have all the choices and try to solve it. That would be awesome. Very skill testing. I mean, it would probably be impossible for the thing to code. Like, is Mass Hysteria better? Is Brawl better? Is Holy Nova better? You know, there's like 47 different uh, possibilities for... Uh, let's go ahead and search it and do this. So that Starfall later maybe addresses it. Uh, yeah, Snip Snap and Acorn Bearer are fine next turn. Nope, Snip Snap's fine next turn. <laughs> Wrong count, Reach. Wrong count, buddy. You thought about adding Ancient War to this deck? No, we just built it. We haven't really thought about much of anything. We're kind of just getting a feel for it. Might be a fine idea. Just have not tested it yet. Alright, so next turn we can start going hard with Starfall or Oasis, whichever feels better. Um, probably Oasis feels better because the board's not crazy yet. He may, in fact, trade in, trade in on this too just to draw more Murlocs. But I like having the Starfall. Sadly, we do currently only have one, so if I could play an Elise sooner rather than later, that would be nice. I have a feeling we're probably going to need the Surger soon. I would like to Elise the Surger too, to be honest. Uh, we're going to have another card in hand, though, so I will only copy a certain number of things, and we'll burn a card as well. It would be cool to copy a Zephyrus, right? That would be the kind of ideal output. He is only going to play... Small boys. In that case, I think Surger's got to be the move, right? Surger's got to be the move. Wrath? Okay. This is interesting. Like, Elise, you really kind of have to figure out what you want to copy, you know? It's not an easy choice. But, I mean, clearly Zephyrus is your number one copy target, right? Copy the Zephyrus, figure it out. That's going to be give, that's gonna give me twisting nethers and stuff to deal with all these Murloc reloads, right? Copying a Starfall would be good, too. Next turn, we're going to have uh, seven cards in hand, so we can play an Acorn Bear and an Elise to fill the hand with copies. That would be fine. I don't really want a Savage Roar. I don't really want a Blessing of the Ancients, I don't think. But that's so cool that, like, if you're against, like, say, a Warrior... And you think you need a lot of reloads. You can use the least to copy, you know, your forest save. You can use the least to copy, um, I don't know, Oasis or, or stuff, that, or Whispering Woods, right? If you're against, like, a deck where you're going to be playing from behind and you need a lot of removal, you can use Elise. Oh, my God. That is definitely the Elise turn. Okay. We found it. <laughs> we found it. Oh, my God. This is, like, the other than the Savage War, which I don't really need, I feel like this is the perfect Elise. Okay. That is actually a sick animation. I, I know I have seen that before, but I honestly didn't remember it at all. So two Zephyrus is in hand. Two Starfalls in hand. Again, the Savage Roar and the Blessing of the Ancients are probably dead to us. I, I mean, we might get a point where we can counter pressure. I mean, it's not impossible, but... I mostly think I'm going to be resolving the board here. As opposed to counter pressuring. It might just end the game a turn or two sooner, which can always help if we are able to stabilize. But if you, if you see, we don't have any minion-generating cards right now, so stabilizing seems very unlikely. If by chance he doesn't trade for some reason into this stuff. I mean, we're going to lose our squirrels, but that's totally fine. would rather have a Zephyrus.
Oh, okay. Toxvin, early, all right. I don't know what to do next turn. I mean, I guess we start with Wraths. Hopefully we don't burn what? What do I not want to burn? Like, Scenarius, maybe. Floop, I wouldn't mind keeping a Floop for another Zephyrus. Uh, Swipe might be handy soon. Crystal Merchant, that's a fine burn. We don't need cards anyway. Okay. Garden Gnome is actually legit. That's fine. Perfect. Rebuild the board a little. We're not dead to Bloodlust or anything, so rebuild the board a bit. Try to leverage these minions to either find a lethal soon, perhaps, or just take nice little trades into these totems. Is Highlander and Big Spell Mage dead after the Luna's nerf? Haven't seen it at all. It's it's pretty dead, yeah. It is dying. Mage fell off really, really hard. I would like to build a mage deck soon and see if we can't find... Uh, I, the one thing I really want to try is Mana Cyclone Quest Mage. We haven't really done that yet. Uh, Mana Cyclone... Let me actually add that to my list so I don't forget. Mana Cyclone Quest Mage. I think there might be a gap there that hasn't been explored enough. Uh, geez, dude. What is this garbage here? Wrath, unfortunately, not quite enough. I mean, Zephyrus will obviously give us some answer to this if I want. Um, is there any two-mana answer to this? Like, can I Woods and then Zephyrus and find a two-mana kill on the Geddon? There's no two-mana kill on this, right? What kind of wild classic is this? I know, right? <laughs> uh, which nerf cards are safe to disenchant? I don't know yet, man. Probably Luna's, but probably not Dr. Boom. I don't think there's any two-mana way to deal with this, right? So we probably just have to play the Zephyrus into, like, a death. You say Zephyrus wrong? No, I don't. How do you say Zephyrus? Your wish is my what do you mean? Um, oh, BGH is solid, yeah. That's fine. Of course. Better than, better than Shadow or Death, obviously. You can Wrath it and then Moonfire. Oh, uh, yeah, that would have been a possibility. Get the Moonfire off Zephyrus, yeah. I say it like it's spelled. What do you mean? It's I, I say it like it's spelled. Zephyrus. What are you... <laughs> what are you talking about? What do you mean? <laughs> Clarify. I don't mind having conversations about pronunciations. You just gotta explain what you mean. Like, what do you mean? It's R-Y, not Y-R. I know, that's why I say Zephyrus. Zephyrus. Are you saying Zephyrs? It, I, I'm, I'm saying Zephyrus. What are you... I, I, we're on the same page. I don't understand. I don't understand. Um, <laughs> do you want me to say Zephyrs? Because that's not it. It's not... Zephyrs are a thing. A zephyr is a gust of wind. That's not... Oh, yeah. That's not what this is. He, he, it's, it's switched. The R comes before the Y. It's zephyr, Zephyrus. Sometimes I think I put a little lull in between and say Zephyrus. But I still end with a Riss. Um, you could say Zephyrus, I guess. Yeah, if you wanted to pronounce the Y like an E, that's a possibility. I probably do... Kind of hold in the middle sometimes, I'm sure. Zephyrus. But. It's pronounced orange. <laughs> orange. I've thought about orange so many times since we talked about it that day, man. Orange. 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 I, I, I cannot deal with it, dude. It's blown my mind. Why didn't he hit the... Why didn't he just hit the bigger boy here? I don't know why you leave the bigger dude alive. Um... All right. I mean, is this is this lethal again? Surely it is, right? Um. Okay. Cool. Yep. I even had a Zephyrus bloodlust too, but I said Zephyrus. No, I said it exactly. You got new new Jack. You can't leave. You got to come back. N C U Jack. You can't just drop bombs like that and then leave you've abandoned the scene of the crime what do you mean <laughs> oh my god you say my name wrong too okay so you're just being dumb i thought we were having an interesting conversation but you're just being dumb that's fine too i don't mind if you're being dumb as long as i know 
I like talking about card pronunciations, though. It's a theme around the channel. You might have thought you were trolling, but we actually make a habit of this. It's a very common thing. We had about an hour-long discussion the other night, I think, talking about... What were we talking about? Um, oh, Risa. Commander Risa versus Risa. Uh, Rick and Morty does mean your IQ is at least over uh, 40. It's confirmed. <laughs> When does the next Rick and Morty come out? I know they've been planning it forever, I feel like. Uh, is it possible to be a casual fan of Rick and Morty, or do you have to be a super fan? I think I'm a casual fan. Risa just doesn't sound right. I know it doesn't, but it's in a video. Harsum put out a video where they talk about Commander Risa. So I have to go with the Hearthstone dev team's pronunciation, right? And then we talked about Iker, and then we talked about... Um, what else? Blood to Iker, we talked about Archivist, all of these words that are very difficult to, to say. Devs are dumb and stupid. <laughs> well, that's, that's an opinion you're allowed to have, but they come up with the words and the names, so I think they have the right to, to, claim, the, um, to claim it, you know. They can say Risa if they want, because they made up her name. Uh, well, maybe not. She might actually be a World of Warcraft character, but I don't think she is. She, I don't remember if she is. She might be, though. Ooh, this is debatable, right? All of these have some interesting applications. Right now, I'm thinking about Nourish a little bit, because I have Stelladris and I'm out of cards. Uh, but Mark of the Lois, Loa works pretty well with Stelladris, too. Um, I think I'm going to take the Nourish, though. I mean, we are going to naturally accrue cards because I'm not going to be playing stuff much. Like, I'm not going to slam a Stell address on three. So maybe the Nourish loses a little bit of value there. But I sure love Ramp, too. Hmm. Can't really play this on six with Stell address, though, because you want to play the Stell address after you get the two mana back. That would be an eight mana player. The Ramp loses its efficacy. So I guess it's Mark below. Interesting debates. Iker is a real word, yeah. You know how much That's why I'm annoyed by the mispronunciations of it. Rick and Morty is my shiznit. <laughs> Pyro, I bet, yeah. You are definitely a conspiracy theorist. Oh, Pyro, somebody earlier said thank you for a gifted sub. Who was it? Shoot. Oh, man. I don't remember who it was, but I did see a message that I missed from Esdeon. I do not think it's possible to build super budget decks like I used to, man. No, I, I actually think it's impossible. Unfortunately, sorry to say. Okay. Okay, no coin here really hurt us, I think. Um, Keynote, I missed your message too. Reno got a lot worse. Yeah, Reno got a lot worse. Reno's not very good anymore. You say Regis or Regis? I say Regis, although I do have the luxury of changing it if I want. <laughs> um, do we try to go for the board or do we just wait on the Surgers? The problem is the Surgers are going to be pretty delayed. Uh, I can just take past turns here if I want. I mean, I don't really have to play into stuff. Hmm. I could also just perhaps like attack the Scavenging Hina over two turns. That's not the craziest notion either. Welcome. Maybe he can't buff it or kill a minion. I don't know. Let's try. Let's try. Jables, thanks for the Twitch Prime sub. We're at 1320 on the sub count. We are actually pushing closer to 1350 to the next uh, sub goal giveaway. I just sent out like most of the giveaway stuff yesterday. Anybody who had been waiting to hear from me, check your whispers. I think everybody got back to me though. There's still a couple I owe. Suharek got back to me. Okay, so I need to have PayPal for him. Okay, that's good. And Boomka. Oh, Boomka I gotta send out again. Okay. Boomka I gotta send out again. That's no big deal. Alright. Alright, yeah, so this worked out. This is a good plan. We took a little extra damage, certainly, but nonetheless, we're gonna get to reload some still and contest the board, finish the quest for the Surger next turn. Hey, that's fine. Two, three is good. Okay, now I'm just gonna need some like life gain recovery at some point. So maybe a hidden oasis to to outlast this hunter. This feels a bit like a uh, quest hunter deck, but I didn't see the quest utilized, so I'm interested. Uh, but anyway, thank you, Jables. Uh, incredible power of flex tape. It is indeed very powerful. Oh, it was you, Raphael Gazzetti? Yes, 
Uh, he wanted to say thank you to Pyro. That's it. If you could bring any card out of the Hall of Fame, what would it be? Lothab. Lothab. It's a good video idea. What cards did I bring out of the Hall of Fame? Lothab would be a good one. That would be good. What other cards would you guys bring? Ragnaros maybe too? I like Rag. I think Rag's really fun for the game. I don't think he's that OP. Sylvanas is good too. I didn't I didn't really see them as problems. I, I, you know, I understand the Hearthstone logic. It's like, oh, we don't want, you know, just one or two cards like dominating the game or whatever. I get that logic, but my counter argument was always like, well, they're like the most iconic characters in Hearthstone, you know, or in World of Warcraft. Like if any card is going to be influential, like, and going to be super impactful, let it be those guys because they're like the go-tos, you know. They're the go-tos. Uh, Lotheb is next. Oh, oh, I guess I interpreted the question wrong. I thought you just meant out of wild format. Oh, okay. You mean specifically out of Hall of Fame only. Shoot. Um, well then, yeah, I mean, Rag and Sylvana still apply. Not Ice Block. I would never bring Ice Block back. Uh, my apologies. I thought you just meant out of wild. Do you have anyone? Uh, or multiple people you see as a streamer rival? Not really. I mean, there are certainly other people who are on, like, the same kind of tract. If that makes sense, that's a thing. I, I know that it happens, but I don't... As you guys know, and I say all the time, like I try to help other streamers as much as I can. Like I want other people to succeed. I'm not anti-competitive in the world of streaming. I just want to see the game succeed, and then we'll all find our own audiences. Because I'm not going to be a streamer that's for everybody. Like I have a personality that only some people attract to, and so does every streamer, right? We all find people we line up with. So, Because there, there's nobody out there who's just like me, you know? So why try to fight somebody else who's going to have a streamer they way more identify with, right? So no, I don't really have rivals so much. I and mean, we've had some kind of funny rivalries, like Zeddy a little bit has been a rivalry recently, but not, like, I'm not actually a rivalry with Zeddy, just it's like a meme. He makes fun of us sometimes. I poke back a little bit sometimes, that sort of stuff. Uh, Dexter is somebody who's on, like, a similar tract as me, I think. Maybe, like, Slissa from a streaming standpoint, but again, they're like friends, they're not rivals, I want to support them, I want them to succeed, you know, I know it's boring, there's no drama, but <laughs> it's just a reality, I think, maybe I should have buffed the other dude, I didn't actually dream this Eladris would die there, I thought we were going to get to utilize it again, so now I'm a little sad, but not, not really too sad, I suppose. Um, does this guy run, like, Unleash the Hounds? We're setting up for a pretty good Savage War soon, so let's just go wide and hit face. I think we're just gonna win here in a moment. This is a lot of damage next turn, right? Both of these together. He does, I mean, Unleash the Hounds doesn't even do enough, right? Like, who cares? Your wish is my Blizzard does, though. Blizzard sure does. <laughs> Whoops. That's a Blizzard, 100%. Okay. Sure, sure. No big shock there. Welcome. No big shock. Boys, uh, this might be an Elise turn, I guess. Water. I don't know. Elise and uh, Gonks again. Yikes, dude. That hurt. Maybe we just go three snip snap here. Yeah, I think we go three wide snip snaps. Again, just setting up for the uh, Savage Rush is pretty sweet. We could even snip snap again. Twice. For the Savager as well to add four additional damage to the board. This might this might work. This might work. Shadow Wanathan, thanks for the resub, dude. Three months in a row. Wow. Soon we're gonna be starting sub timber, guys, where tier one subs. Um, I don't know. There's some kind of bonus or something. Bits too. Uh, the pro Jared, pro Jared stuff. I've kind of seen it. I don't know enough to comment on it, as is the case with most things. Hey, Jables, enjoying my YouTube stuff and drop by with the sub. Thanks, dude. That's like the best, man. Appreciate it. Um, jeez, do we go for the throat here? Do I have enough? Uh, 6 plus 8 is... Uh, 14 plus 2 is 16. We actually don't have enough. Does that mean I have to trade? Snakes, really? Ugh. Um...
snipe? Oh, did I activate a rat trap? Oh, thank God, no, snipe. That's fine. I don't care about snipe. That's good, actually, that we know it's not a rat trap. Rats would have been bad, obviously, to trade into this. Um, okay, I'm running out of gas a little bit. That Zephyr's turn really broke me. That was really bad. Savage Roar might still get us there, though, soon. I mean, we'll see. He's got some good trades here, but it kind of depends on how he does this. Like, if he kills a Snip Snap instead of a 1-1 one -one or whatever. Oh, I forgot these had a lot of Snip Snaps, too. Oh, he's definitely dead, right? Right? No, maybe not, actually. We don't really have enough. Um... Well, we have four, and this adds eight. That's only 12. We can't find any additional. This doesn't go face. So I guess we probably just Elise and um, Force of Nature here. This gives me two Savage Roars for next turn, right? This does hurt us a little bit if I go into this against... Um, yeah, actually, I don't I don't need to do that. That's a, that's a waste. I don't need to do that because it hurts me against Unleash the Hounds a little bit. I give him seven... Unleash the Hounds, and I don't need it, right? I, these double Savage Wars means it's just, it's silly. Go for the Taunt to be super safe so that you don't lose, like, Unleash the Hounds is hard. Or give him, like, any outs or whatever. Soul Gen, perhaps the same story. I need a Kill Command to hit his face here, not my minions. Hit one of those things. Mark Shot hit that. Oh, God, that's, like, the perfect Mark Shot target. Okay. <laughs> it opens up the line. Oh, the Blizzard, too. Shoot, I forgot about the Blizzard. Wow. Thank God we didn't play Force of Nature, at least. I think we're dead, right? Unless Zul'jin hits one of these. Oh my god, Zul'jin! At least that connected, jeez. Okay, well, this got a lot harder again. Now we know that's Snipe, and we know that's, uh... Which means I'm dead, because I can't... Well, not dead, but I can't really kill that thing. So that's Snipe and Snakes. So we can just play double force and try to get there, I guess. Which we we could definitely can get there. As long as he doesn't play an explosive trap. Oh, even explosive trap doesn't matter. So maybe he'll play an maybe well we may be dead, right? We don't know. He has seven, he only needs four damage, so like Brand kills us, obviously. A lot of stuff here is lethal. But uh kill command again off like the mark shot, maybe. There's a ton of things. If not, though, we are pushing a lot of counter damage here. A lot of counter damage. I know I'm missing check as I'm concentrating. I'm sorry. Um, uh, Elise, Savage Roar, Savage Roar. That was a lethal? Was Elise, Savage Roar, Savage Roar a lethal or just a play? Did we have enough mana for that even? No, there's no mana for that. That's 11 mana. <laughs> That's 11 mana. Yeah, that doesn't work. Um, Miss Lethal is Snip Snap. I don't think so, right? We um, we could have double Snip Snapped and Savage Roared, but when I did the math, I don't think it was lethal, right? I think we talked through that one, didn't we? Do you think Zul'jin is OP? Yeah, kind of. I mean, I'm always hesitant to say OP. He's very P. He's VP for sure. Um, his OP-ness, though, is, you know... Pretty big O penis, but not the. Nope. Nope. It's uh, he is not O P. He's very powerful. Very powerful. That doesn't work either. Yeah. That doesn't work either. I can't. I hate that I can't say. How do you talk about O P? His O P nature. I don't know how to talk about that. So let's see. Six plus eight plus eight is. Plenty, right? And we know that's only snakes. Is it actually that plenty? Six plus eight plus eight is actually barely enough. Um, we do have the blessing as well, though, so that should be fine. Okay. Cool. Sweet. So, this deck is currently undefeated, guys. <laughs> um, isn't it? No, we lost a game. Never mind. We lost to the mage. Oh, that was in wild. That doesn't count. Yeah, we lost to a wild game. But we're undefeated against uh, standard decks. We accidentally queued into wild. This deck feels great. The uh, Elise feels really strong so far. Way better than I anticipated. 
And there you go. That was the Zephyrus Elise token good quest druid, whatever you want to call it. This deck has like 45 <laughs> labels. And uh, as you saw, it working pretty well. Now, uh, of course, it didn't win every game with this deck as you kept playing, but it has maintained a pretty solid positive win rate. I can't say with any confidence that it's better than like a strict quest druid deck but if you think this looks really fun you've got some of these cards laying around you want to catch your opponent off guard with an early zephyrus or something this deck can do some pretty cool stuff so give it a shot i think you will absolutely win some games and probably even more than you lose that said if you have any thoughts on this deck want to change it tweak it share those thoughts in the comments below but until then thanks so much for watching and until next time game on